Hi, boys and girls, and welcome to our brand new series, Ever After. And in our series, Ever After, we're exploring some fairy tales, some made up stories, and we're comparing them to the true stories of the Bible, because God is truly the best writer. Yes, Miss Chass, I have an idea. Oh. Since we're talking all about fairy tales and made up stories, I figured we'd make a fairy tale up ourselves. Sound Love good? Love it, sounds so much fun. Awesome, okay, here it goes. Once upon a time, in this amazing forest, called Ever After Woods, there lived a beautiful princess named Princess Forest. That's you, play along. Oh, oh, oh. And Princess Forest was up to no good. She was being mischievous and she ran into a mischievous dragon named Schmelly the Dragon. Manny, that looks real. Yes, it's pretend, play along. No, that's definitely real. Uh, that looks like Dragon Jewel and smells like Dragon Breath. All right, boys and girls, we are so excited for our series Ever After, and we hope you'll join us every single week in your prince and princess costumes. We can't wait to see you. And if you watch us online and you're new, text in your name and the word new to the number on the screen. We send out mail every week to all of our friends. We send surprises, letters, color sheets. You're gonna love it. Text in your name and the word new to the number on the screen. And Ms. Chas, let's get you cleaned up because that, that really was dragon's drool, huh? All right, well, boys and girls, we hope you enjoy our brand new series, Ever After. Bye. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work I... Oh, you're here. Hello boys and girls, my name is Manny and I am so excited to be here with you today for our brand new series, Ever After. And in Ever After, we are going to be talking about popular fairy tales and stories and comparing them to the true stories from the Bible. Because God truly is the best writer of all, right? Do you guys hear that? Mirror, mirror. Who is that? Mirror, mirror. Oh, I think I know what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to say mirror, mirror. Are you guys ready? On the count of three, let's say it together. One, two, three. Mirror, mirror. There's our big idea, it's right there. And it says, God gives us companions. Can you guys say that with me? God gives us companions. Well, I am so excited to figure out what this big idea means. But first, before we go any further, let's pray. So if everybody can get nice and quiet for me, nice and quiet. God, we thank you so much for this day. And I thank you for all of these boys and girls that are here today. God, we thank you also for all the stories that you give to us that we can learn from. We ask that you open our hearts and minds today as we learn about you so that we can hear what you want to teach us. And God, I ask that you be with all these boys and girls as they go through their week. Help them to know that you're there and that they can talk to you whenever they need. And in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. All right, boys and girls, we have a brand new song for you. I am super excited. So everybody get up, stand up, and let's go to our first song. Mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, telling those lies, pointing out your flaws. That isn't who you are. That isn't who you are. It might be hard to hear, but let me tell you, dear, if you could see what I could see, I know you would believe.
job on your song, boys and girls. Now, let's get into our story for today. And it is a true story from the Bible. And we are going to be in the Old Testament in the book of Ruth. Now, Ruth, let me tell you, her life was no fairy tale. But just like our big idea says, God gave her a companion named Naomi. And God gave Naomi a companion named Ruth. Now, Ruth was married to Naomi's son, Malin, okay? So we're gonna read a verse out of their story and it's gonna be in Ruth chapter one. So big number one, little number four. Let's read. They were married to Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malin and Kilian also died. And Naomi was left without her sons and her husband. This story sounds so sad, but I'm excited to watch and see what happens next. So boys and girls, let's get to our video to find out a little bit more about our story and we'll be right back. God's story, Ruth. So part of God's story is about a woman named Ruth and it begins like this. Ruth lived in a place called Moab and was married to a guy who was part of God's special family, the Israelites. A few years later though, Ruth's husband died. Instead of returning to her family, which would have been expected, she stayed with Naomi, her husband's mom. Naomi tried to get Ruth to go back to her family in Moab, but Ruth wouldn't leave Naomi, no matter what. In fact, she wanted to go back to Israel with her. Ruth said, your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. So they both returned to Naomi's home in Bethlehem. Back then, though, it was hard for women to find work. Usually, they had to be taken care of by their husband or a dad. It's really hard to imagine that now, but Naomi and Ruth might not have even known how they'd survive. At first, to get food, Ruth went to the fields of a man named Boaz and followed his harvesters around. If they dropped anything, even just a piece of grain, she picked it up. This was called gleaning. Ruth worked from morning to night and barely even took a break. Boaz noticed. He told his workers to leave behind some extra grain for her to gather. When Naomi heard about this, she was overjoyed because Boaz was Naomi's relative and what's called a family redeemer. That meant that it was his responsibility to take care of his family. If anybody was going to rescue Ruth and Naomi, it was Boaz. Kids, we have a redeemer too. It's Jesus. He's the one who saves us. Anyway, this gave Naomi an idea. She told Ruth to put on her best clothes and perfume and then go to the place where Boaz was sleeping. Naomi said that once Boaz had gone to sleep, Ruth should lay down by his feet. Now, this may sound like a weird plan, but it was actually really brave. Ruth trusted Naomi and obeyed. When Boaz woke up, he was surprised. After all, someone was lying at his feet. That's not exactly a normal night. When Boaz asked who Ruth was, she said, I am your servant. You are my family redeemer. Now Boaz understood. Ruth wanted Boaz to marry her so that she and Naomi would both be taken care of. Boaz agreed. 
This was a huge deal. Ruth wasn't an Israelite, but she wanted to follow God anyway. By marrying Boaz, she got to officially be part of God's family. In fact, Ruth's great-grandson was King David, and many, many years later, Jesus, the rescuer, was born into the same family line. Now, because of Jesus, we get to be a part of God's family too. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Ruth was from Moab. Her husband died. Ruth was left with his mom, Naomi. Naomi told her to go home. Ruth said no. She went to Israel with Naomi. They needed someone to take care of them. Ruth gleaned in a field. Boaz noticed. He left extra grain for Ruth. Naomi made a plan. Ruth obeyed it. She wanted to marry Boaz. He agreed. Ruth became part of God's special family. And we can too. And that's a part of God's story. Wow, what an amazing story. And I want you guys to help me out for a minute. Can you yell out how you think Naomi might have felt after her sons and her husband died? Sad, scared, alone, right? She probably was just feeling everything and feeling like no one cared and no one wanted to help her. But what happened? God provided exactly what she needed, right? God gave her a companion. And a companion is another way to say friend. So God gave her a friend, somebody to help her. Just like our big idea says, and let's all say it together, God gives us companions. Great job. Now, we're gonna get to our Bible verse, and I hear we have a real princess here to help us out. So let's go see who that is, and we'll be right back. Welcome, princes and princesses, knights and ladies of the land. I'm Princess Ariel. Not that Ariel. And I'm the princess of the Ever After Woods. Now, let's get to our Bible verse, Psalm 121, 8. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Thank you so much, princes and princesses, for spending time with me today. I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. You're back. I just love Princess Ariel. I hope she comes back next week. Now, we are in the object lesson part of our video, and we are gonna play something called show and tell. You might have played it at school. And since we're talking about fairy tales, I wanna rename it, we're gonna call it show and fairy tell. So I wanna bring out Miss Chastity. Oh, Miss Chastity, come out, come out wherever you are. Hey, boys and girls. Manny, where are we? It seems so wonderful here. Yes, we are in the Ever After Wood. Isn't it amazing? Yes, and that reminds me of your outfit. You look familiar. Boys and girls, does she look like someone? Manny. Well, Manny, Manny, you look like Manny, but your outfit, it looks like, I wonder what it is. Hmm. Maybe Snow White? Oh, boys, you think Snow White too? Okay, Snow White? Yes, I am so glad you mentioned that because Snow White the fairy tale actually is a lot like our Bible story and our big idea. Like we were talking about, God gives us companions in the cartoon or the movie, Snow White, she gets a bunch of companions, the seven dwarfs who help her. And in our Bible story, Ruth got Naomi and Naomi got Ruth to help her. And that's actually why I wanted to bring you out because boys and girls, I prayed for Miss Chastity and she was my companion. And I wanna tell you a story because our big idea is God gives us companions, which companion is another word for friend. So right, yeah, friend. friends. So I wanna tell you a story about how I prayed for Miss Chastity. I prayed for a companion. So I was praying and I was doing something that the Bible talks about called fasting. And fasting is where you give something up while you're praying to show God that you are serious about what you are praying for. So like I, yummy apple pie? Exactly, but it doesn't have to be food. Oh. Sometimes people can give up things that they really like or um, something that they do, right? So I had given something up and I was praying to God and I was praying, I prayed for about a month and I didn't hear anything and I was praying, God, send me someone that loves these boys and girls just as much as I do. And oh, do you love the boys and girls? 
She loves you guys a lot and so do I. And I was praying, God, send me someone who loves making these videos and loves telling people about Jesus. And do you like making these videos? Love it. It's my favorite thing to do. Yes, boys and girls, I was praying for so many things, and I have to tell you, in Miss Chastity, God sent me so much more than I was even asking for. He knew exactly what I needed. And Miss Chast, do you want to tell the boys and girls it was amazing at the same time I was praying what you were praying for? Yes, so boys and girls, um, at that point in my life, I was going through a transition. I wasn't sure what God wanted me to do. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do next. And so I was praying, God, please just give me a direction. God, show me what I should be doing. And he gave me Manny, he gave me this job. And I am so thankful that I get to stand up here beside my friend Manny and get to teach you guys about Jesus. Yes, it's so amazing. And boys and girls, we tell you that story because God does give companions. And you might be praying right now for a companion, right? You might be praying, God, send me someone to help me at school because I'm lonely. Or you might be praying, God, send me someone to love me because I feel like no one loves me. And I bet, Manny, there's some kids out there who are thinking to themselves, I'm a really good friend. So I bet they're praying that they could be a really good friend to others. Yes, yes. And boys and girls, we want you to know that God hears your prayers and He wants to hear from you, even though He knows your heart, right? He knew what I was going to say to Him before I even said it. But just like we like to hear from our friends that, we they love us and that we love them right god wants us to tell him that we love him and we need his guidance and we want him to give us someone that he knows that we need so boys and girls we want to stop for just a minute and pray for you and what you're praying for okay so if everybody can get nice and quiet for us god you know what is on each and every boy and girl's heart right now and you know exactly what they're praying for. God, I pray for the boy and girl that's praying for a friend. God, I pray for the boy and girl right now that's, that's lonely. God, I pray that you send these boys and girls people to show them that you love them and that they are loved. God, I ask that you help them to remember that you're there and that they can call on you and pray to you when Ever they need and that you hear them. Help them to know that you hear them, God. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, Manny, did you know that in the movie, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, she actually prayed for her friends too? I actually do. I watched it a few weeks ago and it was amazing. She prayed for her friends. And that's something you can do too, boys and girls. It's, it's awesome. But that's all the time we have for today. But we want you to remember that no matter what, that Jesus loves you. And, and we, we do, do too. too. Bye.